The return of Dick Cheney. Let's play hardball. Good evening, I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Let me start tonight with Dick Cheney. He's out there attacking President Obama over Iraq, pretending that he, Dick Cheney, wasn't the perpetrator of the disaster. It was Cheney who sold the limited George W. Bush on going into Iraq in the first place, that war of choice we have all come to regret. It was Dick Cheney who championed the neocons and the destruction of the Iraqi army, the destruction of the Iraqi government, and the banishment of the country's Sunni population from the government in Baghdad. It was Cheney and his limited partner Bush again who decided when the United States should leave Iraq. And it was Cheney again with his limited partner, President Bush, who signed an agreement with the Iraqi government that led to the release of the man now leading the ISIS forces streaming toward Baghdad and threatening war with the United States. Now it comes Cheney again pretending to have clean hands. Once again, using a favorable media platform, the op-ed page of the Wall Street Journal, and creating an oddly staged video with his daughter and his cowboy hat. His back to the Wyoming mountains, his face plastered to a teleprompter. It reminds me of those ads for reverse mortgages that Fred Thompson and Robert Wagner do. Or better yet, it's like the new commercial they're running on Fox right now for a company called Died in House. That probably promises to tell you whether someone died in the house you're thinking of buying. It's a service we need for grading Dick Cheney's latest war talk. Before buying into Cheney's war talk, we all of us ought to check out the past Cheney sales pitches, the, one, the ones that killed so many Americans. Let's put it nicely. Germany right now, the Huffington Post, Howard Feynman, and Mother Jones Magazine's David Korn, both are, of course, prized. MSNBC political analyst. Dick Cheney, of course, was consistently wrong on all aspects of the Iraq war. Let's watch him during his sales pitch before the war. Regime change in Iraq would bring about a number of benefits to the region. When the gravest of threats are eliminated, the freedom-loving peoples of the region will have a chance to promote the values that can bring lasting peace. Do you think the American people are prepared for a long, costly, and bloody battle with significant American casualties? I don't, I don't think it's likely to unfold that way, Tim, because I really do believe we will be greeted as liberators. If we do have to take action, do you think it will be a long war or a short war? My own judgment, based on my time as Secretary of Defense uh, and uh, having operated in this area in the past, I'm confident that our troops will be successful, and I think it'll go relatively quickly. Uh, but you weeks, can't, you can't months. count on that. Um, but weeks rather than months. The war would last weeks in Iraq, and Cheney was still getting it wrong in May of 20, 2005 when he told Larry King, I think they're in the last throes, if you will, of the insurgency. Howard, it just seems to me that the man is shameless. I mean, uh, they used to say that about Liberace, laughed all the way to the bank. But here's a guy that just comes out again and again and again, wrong, 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 and seems to enjoy the fact that he has this immediate media. He gets automatic attention from the Wall Street Journal. They just run him like he's, like he's Henry Kissinger. I don't get it. Well, Chris, I think you're looking at it through the wrong lens. He's not a politician anymore. He's not a diplomat. He's not a former Secretary of State. He's a zealot. He's almost a religious convert to this point of view. That's the lens to look at it through. In the first Gulf War, Dick Cheney was not in favor of going to Baghdad. Right. Perhaps that and other changes that happened to him in the intervening years turned him by the time George Bush needed sane, sound advice in the first days after 9-11 into a remorseless, relentless, zealot. That zealotry that you're watching there, reinforced by the love of his daughter and whatever their ambitions are out there, it's zealotry and that's what we're listening to. This is not reason, it's zealousness at and this it, point. It's, and it's not even, I went studied it almost like the Bible, trying to figure out exactly what he's proposing. He isn't proposing, all he's doing is dumping on Obama, oh, sure. dumping on him saying, somehow if we left a residual force there of a few thousand soldiers, that would change history. No one believes that. You know, well, he's just taking He's doing what everyone else is doing on the Republican side, whether it's John Banner, John McCain, or others. They've been dumping on Obama without saying anything about what they would do now. There was one line in the op-ed that I read, and I had to laugh. It showed an utter lack of self-awareness on the part of Dick Cheney when he says, rarely has a U.S. president been so wrong about so much at the expense of so many. Now, he's 
thinks he's talking about Barack Obama, but that line can be applied to George W. Bush. There are, you know, there are 4,500 Americans who are dead, maybe 200,000 or more Iraqis who are dead, millions who are displaced, and all the stuff that's happening now was is like the genie let out of the bottle that they did. They're miscalculations. Okay. They didn't plan for this. Does he really think he can get off scot-free? I think the answer is yes. I don't think it's zealotry. I think he's desperate. This man, part of him must know this has been a disaster, and the only way he can get out of it is by making the president, the current president, look worse. Anyway, in addition to that Wall Street Journal piece that ran today, Dick Cheney and his daughter Liz released a video today attacking President Obama. Let's watch this rather peculiar setting. I'm Liz Cheney. I'm Dick Cheney. We stand at a critical moment in the life of our nation. The policies of the last six years have left America diminished and weakened. Our enemies no longer fear us. Our allies no longer trust us. We are forming the Alliance for a Strong America because we know America's security depends upon our ability to reverse President Obama's policies. I don't know what to make of this. Is, is, Liz, what, what, is this a salaried position, this new yeah, company they're forming, well, or what? Uh, and, the, uh, and the cowboy hat, what's that got to do with Iraq? It has everything to do with uh, Iraq and Wyoming and their view, because <laughs> yeah. Barack Obama is not the kind of man who could wear a cowboy hat, and I, Dick Cheney, am. Quite frankly, that strikes me as a political slash business opportunity, yeah. family opportunity to rebuild the family franchise, tattered as it is, on behalf of Liz Cheney, who was humiliated when she tried to run yeah. out there. This is, this, is a, this, is a, this, is, this is the family business. Call it zealotry, call it attack on Obama, call it what you will. This is what these people know how to do. This is all that they know how to do. This well, is, here's but, a, this, but this is like the third or fourth <laughs> time that Liz Cheney has founded an organization to defend America and attack Barack Obama. It's, it's getting to be kind of silly. Well, I mean, now it's not silly, because let me just try right. something. We're in a bad situation now, where neither party, neither ideology in this country, or anybody in the middle has any idea how to deal with this hellhole over there that's been created in Iraq. Right. We've got people fighting a religious war that's been going on for a thousand years, but suddenly it's getting really bloody. And these people on one side are beheading people, they're going around just mm -hmm. looking for people, having instant religious tests like we can't imagine having in this country where you're as to religion, if you get the words wrong, they kill you. On the other side, they're just knocking off people to get even. This looks like it's going to escalate. The American people normally try to find out who to blame. Now, it, it seems to me what we're in here is a competition of blame. Were we wrong to go into Iraq? I think so. I think you guys do. I think the American people overwhelmingly think we didn't know what we were doing over there. We still don't. We, we, we walked into this kind of a situation. But what's Cheney's political number here? He's always been talking to the business guys in the boardroom. You know who likes him. The, the rich business guys are with big corporate people. They sit around, well, they have, you know, cognac with them. They sit around and talk about the liberals and the lefties. Right, Chris. They're, they're listening it's to him. It's serious because the guy, let's not forget. The Republicans are listening yeah, to him. The, the guy was Some. Vice President of the United States. He was, he was Secretary of Defense. Right. He was the closest advisor to, as you say, the limited he was George limited. W. George Bush. W. He's a better painter and, than and President. So, and so on one level, David's right. It's pathetic. It's almost laughable. But on another level, it's an indication of just how vicious and useless our politics have become at a time when people like that who should be statesmen are making basically cheap infomercial uh, pack ads mm -hmm. and putting them on television. But That's all he, that is. He has another... That's a, th that's he a is, smart thing. Yeah, Aren't they in a room had, somewhere quietly yeah. trying to figure this yes, thing out? Yes, exactly. They're not, interested, exactly. they're not interested in getting to answers. They're interested in, to, in vindication. And vindication for him is the current president who outed him, or, or his policy, that is, getting, you know, getting blamed for this. Now, the other constituency he's talking to, remember, we've talked about this in the past. They're there is a debate, a real debate within Republican slash conservative circles about what to do with intervention. And so he's been in this basically hand-to-hand -hand struggle with Rand Paul and others, and here he's trying to take advantage of the current moment for the hawks to ride in. Well, that, and to also, the other thing he said in the op-ed piece, he says, he said, Barack Obama wants to take America down a notch. Yeah. Once, once, we're, two. once we're back to this guy is not a real American, he doesn't understand American foreign policy, and it is his desire 
to weaken this country. Read that line from his speech, from his piece, because that, I yeah, think, yeah. really uh, is this, using this stood the president, out. You know, he said something like treason. He says, that President Obama seems determined to leave the office, ensuring he has taken America down a notch. That that is, not that the president is wrong, you know, you can have policy dis yeah. disagreements and have people have the wrong view, that the president purposefully wants to weaken the United States. It goes back to the core of the birther argument, the Tea Party mm -hmm. argument, and that's what he's playing with here now, which is definitely not being well, you, a statesman. Well, you were saying he has to win this because he's relentless, but think about the decisions he made. Go into Iraq, get rid of the Iraqi government, get rid of the Iraqi army, throw the Sunnis out in the streets, another one's fighting the government now. Also, uh, creating an al-Qaeda in the country. There was no al-Qaeda in Mesopotamia or in uh, uh, Iraq when we went in there. That's something that was an offshoot of the frustration of the Sunnis. And now also uh, going along with the Iraqi government in releasing this guy, yeah, the, the, the guy who's now leading their forces. The, the fact is that the situation now is much, much worse oh, yeah. than it would otherwise have been. Uh, and I think that Dick Cheney, in part, is playing to history, if he can imagine it. Uh, but I, and there's an air of desperation to what he's doing now. Yeah. And, it's, and, and we should call him to account for not, not being somebody who was part of, of, of what he projected as a mature leadership st structure in the United States. Secretary of Defense, uh, Vice President of the United States, supposedly a sober-minded, mature advisor uh, that would protect American greatness. Instead, the dispassionate view of history so far, and I think on into the indefinite future, is not only was the war a mistake, not only was his advocacy a tragedy in the inner circles of the White House, but he deserves to be called for account for it, and he refuses to do so. You know, it seems a lot of times people are taken by temperament, and he comes off with that sort of avuncular fashion. Right. And that's, he sold and George W. Man, Bush on that. He and sold and George the older, W. Bush you know, on that. As we now know, Tim, or yeah. as we now know, George, yeah. that same avuncular manner he takes on, the bonding technique he but, uses. But, and in the end, he has none of the good instincts that came out of the Vietnam War, yeah. because he didn't fight it. None of those instincts. We better be careful not to get caught in these uh, sand traps, these, uh, these uh, yeah. sinkholes yeah. that our country gets into once in a while. He has none of those really good, healthy, post-Vietnam yeah. instincts, but he has this avuncular style that some people, you know, but I but think but the but former but President Dick, uh, former President Bush fell for. Yeah, I think so. And I think, though, he's turned into a complete partisan hack. You know, you mentioned Kissinger. Kissinger, who I totally disagree with, I think he ruined Chile, Argentina, and it's terrible in Vietnam. At least when he talks now, he tries to come up with solutions. This is what I think we should do about China. This is what I think yeah. we should do about the Middle East. And so at least I, I respect him for being in the policy debate. Dick Cheney comes out with no solutions whatsoever. It's all about partisan revenge. And as someone who once served in the, in the second highest position in this land, to not respect the policy debate enough to contribute positively shows just how far he is uh, off I mean, the reservation and should be drummed out of polite uh, society. Again, you should look up DiedInHouse.com and look up Cheney and the Iraq War. Anyway, thank you, Howard Feynman. Thank you, David Korn.